turned quite a few spheres uh, free-handed uh, as shown in this this picture. But turning these free-handed can be more of a challenge uh, than using a jig. And I know many of y'all would prefer the precision uh, from a jig. So today I'm going to demonstrate the use of a sphere cutting jig from ChefWearKits.com. Hi y'all, welcome to my shop. I'm Mike Peace and I'm passionate about wood turning and I'm here to share with you tips, tricks, and techniques to help you become a better wood turner. And if that's something you're interested in, click on the uh, subscribe button. I've been using this easy threading jig from Chefware Kits for about four years and have threaded many boxes such as the acorn box shown here. They've made a few adaptions to create what is now a combo jig. Chefware Kits uh, is not paying me to, to do this video but they did provide me this this sphere jig adapter and uh, allowed me to trade in my old body for the newer body that uh, will take this uh, ad adapter. I'll have the link to their, their website uh, in the description below. As the threading jig, which is basically the body, the lead, lead screw with a nose, nose piece and a uh, uh, tool, uh, tool post, or you can get the, the full combo package which includes the parts for the sphere cutter or you could just get the sphere cutter and later add the threading threading jig so you got three days with the, three different ways to get it you can get the whole package at one time or you can get just the sphere cutter or you can get just the the threading jig and then then add up with the, the combo Chefware Kits does provide very uh, detailed instructions with a lot of pictures, so uh, it's not hard to put put together. Now we're going to assemble uh, the cutter block, cutter, uh, cutter bar, and, and cutter, and fasten that on here with four screws that uh, they supply. Actually, we're going to take off the tool post because I've got it mounted here as if we're going to use it for a threading jig, but we're going to mount it differently for use of the cutter. It's actually going to mount mount on here. So we take the tool post and the swivel swivel assembly. It's got a large nylon uh, washer in there to uh, make it easy to turn. It's got a lock nut. We put that lock nut on there. And then you get a three-quarter inch wrench and you tighten it down. And there's some knurling on this swivel bolt, so I could probably grasp that with a large set of uh, pliers. But I, since I've got this uh, Allen wrench, so you tighten this up as tight as you want to make it. Uh, you know how tight is, is a question of how how easy it swivels. So we can make adjustments on it later. I want it to have have some some friction, but move easily. I think that's about right. I might adjust it later. Uh, already mounted this. Next, we put in the uh, cutter block, cutter uh, uh, cutter bar, and the cutter, and that bolts on right here. These comes with four large bolts. Put that on there. Put in these four bolts and tighten it down. We'll fast forward on this. There we go. There are other threading jigs on the market. Most of them uh, manufactured in Europe. First thing you're going to do is set the uh, the height for this post, uh, and since it's it's coming. It's being mounted in a different way. The height that's appropriate for the threading jig uh, coming in on the bottom here is not the not the same. All right. So you want to set the height so that your center is right at the center. You may not. Your banjo may not allow you to move this right to the center, but you can measure. Certainly, eyeball the uh, height to make sure that it is at the appropriate height. In this case, I need to raise it up just a, a scooch. And I think every threading jig, it, you're going to have to go through a similar operation to make sure you got everything centered. 
So you got the appropriate height. Before we get to see this jig in action, first thing we need to do is kind of uh, rough this out around, put a put a tenon on it, and then uh, uh, we'll get we'll get back with the uh, jig. jig's not going to do all the work for you. It, it helps to kind of rough it out. Just be careful you don't cut off uh, too much that's going to reduce the size of your, your uh, final uh, sphere. Uh, but I've measured the diameter. It's a bit under uh, three inches and I've draw, drawn an equator uh, uh, halfway between each end and I've parted this down a little bit so I can see it on this end. So we're just going to knock off the edges on, on each side. Clean this out just a little bit so I'll have room for the jig to move. Not a sphere, but at least I've, I've got some of the rough edges knocked off. So here's the jig set up. And the real key to this, now that we've got the height set right, is getting the tip of that cutter right down the middle of the, the top of what's going to be our sphere. I've got everything squared up. Next thing you do, you want to make sure everything is tight. That means your banjo, your post, uh, the clamping that, that holds uh, the uh, depth adjustment uh, snug. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get this tool rest out of the way. And now, this has got a sixteenth of an inch thread, so uh, one sixteenth of an inch will cut off one sixty fourth of an inch off your, uh, off your piece. You want to use a speed of about one thousand to fifteen hundred. Take a trial run, see what we get on the edge here. Loosen this, adjust the wheel about one third, take another pass. Come across the other side. Loosen the thread, adjust it about one third, take another pass. say it's experimental but I don't think he's got it uh, for sale yet chefware kits but it's a holder with a carbide cutter and I, that ought to work uh, ought to cut real well let's see how that does can we tighten everything down oh sweet 
wait. Chuck jaws is an indicator of where the center center line is here. I'm getting lining up this jig, make sure it's straight upright, 90 degree to the bedway. Lock everything down. Now let's take another pass on the left side. Equator line should be the last thing that's cut. to do is I need to cut this off with a, with a flush cut saw and uh, then we're going to uh, put it between cup centers. There is a certain amount of hand work that's got to be uh, dealt with, uh, especially in the sanding area. And if you want to get more detail on cup centers, uh, you might want to look at that uh, icon, if I can point to it, up here, uh, for the video I've got on hand uh, uh, cutting spears by hand. It has more detail on finishing, embellishing, and cup centers that would be helpful for, for sanding. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and part this off. Uh, you, if you feel more confident with a flush cut saw, certainly that would be, uh, be a good alternative. Okay, now all we've got to do is a little hand sanding here. And we're almost there. I think we can probably take care of the rest of it uh, between cup centers. Now you could turn these balls uh, between centers and not use a chuck. If so, you'd have to remove something on each, each end. A uh, fast way uh, to remove it, of course, is make sure you've got, a, you've got it centered and then just uh, Trim it up just there on the end where, where there's a ghost image. And now a little sanding will make a short order of cleaning this thing up. Turn the speed down. Keep sandpaper moving. Then change directions. Just rotate it a little bit. I'd rotate it 90 degrees the first time and after that just kind of get that much mouth. And proceed through the various grits. And then we have a perfect sphere. I've, I've got to say this carbide cutter uh, is a big improvement over the high speed cutter. Uh, I think every time you use it, you probably want to uh, take this screw out and just randomly spin this around so you'll get maximum uh, use, use out of it. I think they will, uh, it, it should, do, should do an awful lot, of, uh, awful lot of spheres. By adjusting the position of this in the hole, 
uh, you can change the size of the spheres you can cut from one inch to to eleven inches. You could actually make you uh, like two two bowls that are hollow, basically, and put them together and make a and, and glue them together and make a perfect sphere on the outside for large large spheres. Just a quick reminder: if you plan on buying something through Amazon, I'd appreciate it if you check out my Amazon shop. Uh, with a link in the description, if you, uh, I have a comment about some of the wood turning uh, items that that I use or have used in the past that uh, as to why I'm recommending them. But if you buy anything from Amazon within 24 hours, I'll get a small commission. So uh, it's an easy way to support my channel. Uh, this worked out real well. I was very pleased. It sanded up uh, very nice. Uh, turning spheres can be a lot of fun. Uh, you can embellish them, as shown in these examples. Uh, where you can cut grooves on them, you can add uh, inlay, you can make baseballs. I haven't made any baseballs, but I did make a tennis ball. Using a jig versus freehand, uh, I think the comparison is very similar to doing using a threading jig versus hand thread chasing. Uh, with a jig, uh, it can be easier, it can be faster, it can take a, it can, uh, it, it is uh, a smaller learning curve because it takes less skill, but there is a cost associated with it with the jig. If you want to see a video on me using a threading jig, uh, click on on one of the links below. Uh, or if you want to see me uh, using uh, turning a, a threaded acorn box, uh, here's another video. Y'all stay safe and come on back here.